Good morning everyone. This morning we're going to discuss the information age or the information society. At the end of this lesson, we should be able to determine the human and social impact of the developments in the information, discuss the evolution of technology from ancient times up to the present, and illustrate how social media have affected your lives or their lives. We all know that a uh, highly modernized, automated, data-driven, and technologically advanced nowadays, as evidenced by how information could be transferred shared quickly. The different areas of society have been influenced tremendously, such as communication in economics, industry, and health, and, and the environment. Now, what is information age? Information age, this is the period is starting the last quarter of 20th century. When the information became effortlessly accessible through publication and through the management of information by computer networks, the means of conveying symbolic information among humans has evolved with increasing speed. The, new the information age is also called the digital age and the media age because it was associated with the development of computers. Humans are surrounded on all sides by technology claiming to supply information. A word is a combination of sounds that represent something. However, do they all provide information or just a noise? Yeah. More voices are trying to get our attention, but how can we be sure that they share knowledge and the truth? So, a word is a combination of sounds that represent something. The words are informed because they carry information. And words are informed with the meaning given by the speaker and intended for the listener. So simply put, they communicate meaning. Okay? What are the roles or the role of language? In the human quest for understanding the natural world, the ability to name and classify objects found in nature was seen as the first step in knowing. Thus, scientific research for truth early on recognized the usefulness of language and the ability it gave to make sense of nature. This kind of... Uh, concept for ancient Greeks, language was an, an object worthy of admiration. However, too many questions pop up in your minds because of this word, words have power. So do you believe in that? Many of you believe in that. However, you answer this point is clear that thinking in terms of common system being generated by the speaker and received by the listener is useful in the pursuit of knowledge. So we cannot communicate with each other without the so-called word or words. So we all know also the definition of science. I just included it here. Meaning uh, sire for sire or sire for, from the Latin word which means um, to know. The idea of comprehending the words are more than just combination of sounds led the Greek to seek out the principles of everyday language. When talking to other people, for example, meaningful message is created using ordinary sounds. So its meaning is it is also not diminished by multiplication, the speaker can use the same words over and over again to talk at the same time. Thousands time for thousands of people are listening. It will never change. Nevertheless, the same message will be received by everyone. So, that is how powerful is the word. The first philosophers, as they trust about grouping, grouping, for seeking and unifying principle in nature. The many seemingly different things in the natural world must have unifying factor. There was an end side to be understood. 
They sought for this metapuses, literally meaning after nature. That is according to the Chardin in 1965. But for Plato, principles of one and many refers to the underlying unity among diverse beings in the natural worlds. For Plato, there is a common intrinsic nature shared by different objects which determines their real sense. Biologists devised a way to illustrate these uh, principles using the system differentiating between genus and species. Many species belong in one genus. Can you still recall your science lesson regarding the genus and species? Now, so let's continue. According to James Messenger, who proposed the theory of information age in 1982, the information age is true new age based upon the interconnection of computers via telecommunications with this information system operating both real time and as need basis. The primary factors driving this new age forward are convenience and user friendly will create user depend dependence. Dependence. Huh? Dependence. Now let's go back to the history of the information evolutions. So it was started in 300 BC. So we've already discussed this. You may just browse it uh, in, from Sumerian, Egyptian, the Toros, in 500 BC, the Papyrus, for Chinese civilizations, for Egyptian civilization, Roman civilizations, and the uh, Sumerian civilization. They have their own definite. Uh, evolution when it comes to their contribution in information breakthroughs and uh, you know 180 the book or the codex was developed also so you can see can you still recall johannes uh, johannes gutenberg in 1755 samuel johnson in 1802 so you may just uh, browse this read this anyway this is uploaded in the our google classroom also so you may just uh, download the PowerPoint presentation or the slide decks of this uh, lesson. Now let's continue. In 1861, 1876, so yeah, the Dewey Decimal System was introduced. The Edelmud demonstrated speed photography, the motion picture also in 1861. 1899, first magnetic recording was released. In 1902, the motion picture with special effects was were used 1906 the first uh, invented the electronic amplifying tube or the triad the television camera also was invented that time in 1926 first practical sound movie was produced no? in 1939 regularly scheduled television broadcasting began in the u.s so see how powerful is the u.s and uh, the Great Britain also when it comes to their contribution in the evolution of information. In 1940, beginning the information of science as a discipline, so it became a subject in a tertiary level, in secondary, or in basic education, I guess. And yeah, uh, computer was developed, uh, birth of field of information theory proposed by Claude Shannon, 1957, the planar, this is transistor. And 1958, first integrated circuit, the ICs was also. Mm, 1960, Library Congress or Machine Readable Code was also developed. 1969, Unix operating system was developed. 1971, the Intel introduced the microprocessor chip. 1972, the optical laser was developed by Philips and MCA. In 1974, both Philips and MCA agreed the standard of video disk encoding format. In 1975, after the microphones was kit was released, no? this was the time when my mother and father said, I do. Oh, I'm not saying it. Huh? That is also com communication, right? <laughs> In 1977, when my mom is pregnant with me, <laughs> sorry, Radio Shock introduced the first complete personal computer and 1984 when i was in grade one apple Macintosh uh, computer was introduced in 1980 artificial intelligence was separated from information science huh? in 1987 hypercard was developed by bill atkinson 1991 450 complete works literature and syndrome was released and in january 1997 rsa encryption or the 48-bit number code crack now, let's talk on the truth of information, of the information age. 
these are the different uh, concepts. Information was complete, newer is equated with truer. Selection is a viewpoint, the media sells what the culture buys, the early words gets the firm, you are what you eat, so is your brain. Anything is great, demand will be counterfeited. Ideas are seen as controversial, and dead information walks ever on. Media presence creates the story. The medium selects the message, and the whole truth is a pursuit. Now, mathematics is the language of nature. During that time, technology in the modern world is the pursuit of science. Because the scientific method helped people other people discover how nature behaves and they were able to control nature with technology. So a more accurate statement is, since people have discovered the laws in language of nature, they develop technology that uses the laws in language for their benefit. So this language, of course, is mathematics. That is the great contribution of Isaac Newton. Nature can be understood because it speaks in the language of mathematics and the human brain to a certain extent can comprehend this language unfortunately that fact is not always appreciated now also we have this technological world so we have the different types of computer personal desktop laptop personal server mainframes wearable computers and printing press also was developed during the 15th century the world wide web in the 20th century so famous in here is berners lee so with this these are the contributory factor on how the evolution of information age at present that we are uh, enjoying is still continues the development is the most important uh, concept or facts in the information age so let us not forget them they are the persons the inventors that contributed to the evolutions of information age with this thank you so much and god bless you all have a nice day